Dark Souls 3 here on the Overanalyst channel. Same exact afternoon I took on the old Demon King and the remnants of old Isolith. Um, I hope everybody's doing well this afternoon. I'm trying a new mode available on PS4 here, or a mode that's new to me. Broadcasting 60 FPS, so things should look even crisper and cleaner than they did before. Uh, please let me know if that's the case. Hey, MC, how's it going? How's it going? Welcome, SP. Very well, then take We're just gonna grab us a level real quick. And, uh... Eh, we'll go ahead and get Vigor up, then Endurance to 20, then get enough strength to use our sword. MC says playing some more Cliff Empire. Oh, how's that going? Farewell, I shall make. Actually, while we're here, why don't we use some souls to get that next level? Or hell, just use all of our souls. We need to wring some more levels out of this. MC says turning a cliff into a proper city, providing workers to other cliffs. It actually works very well. So there's like just one massive residential city. Or not residential city, I mean like residential zone. It's pretty smart. There we go. Welcome, husband. Now we should be able to get us a couple of levels. Three levels, damn, look at us. Just barely, but, uh, so that'll be one endurance, two strength, so I can actually use the cool new katana we got. That's the plan. Right on, right on. Farewell, yeah, so we got us an 18 strength katana. Somehow. Compared to the Uchi katana's great... Um, this may look a little familiar, though, huh? It's... it's not the black steel katana, I don't think. But it looks very similar. Pretty sure the Black Blade was actually in uh, Dark Souls 2. It might have been the one of the weapons used by an invading spirit or something. MC says, we'll turn another cliff into a food production area and the first one into, te into tech production. Yeah, that's a smart idea. I think lots of people do similar stuff like in those Civilization-esque games, like specializing all of their cities. I mean, I'm no Civ expert, but it's what I usually do. And we'll want to use what we got left to actually, you know, build up the the weapon just a little bit. Jeez, what? Oh, it's expensive though. Oh, it's expensive though. Yeah, we'll keep using the Uchi Katana for now. So our next order of business is actually going to be you know, making actual progress. Everything we did down in the, uh... in the ruins of old Isolith, that was all optional. Okay, we don't have any bone shard, that's fine. Do we have any regular shard, though? No. Always gotta check that for some reason. Um... Now we're going to be carrying on... I'm so sorry, no, we're not. I just realized we've got to do something with the Katarina armor. It's pretty important, actually. We've got to do it, like, right now. So we'll, uh... Head on back to the Cathedral of the Deep, where we should be able to meet the character who will usher us into the first DLC. Or will give us the ability to access the first DLC at some point, one or the other. Because I actually installed those, once again, between streams. But then we're finally moving on past Wolner's boss fight, and I, I was so excited. We actually managed to take him down without taking a single hit. Mother of the forlorn, who have no place to call their own. Please bear witness to our resolve. For fire for Ariandel. Fire for Ariandel. The ash to what? No, I didn't want to invade another world. Oh my god, I'm being summoned by the uh, I'm being summoned by the watchdogs of Farron Covenant. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> Looks like we're going to be fighting somebody, probably dealing really, really badly with it. Might want to join back up with another Covenant once this is over. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is an interesting setup, isn't it? Oh, man! You dealt a whole... Holy shit! So they've got an entire army of people around. And, of course, stop to taunt me. And, yeah, yeah, what we were dealing with there was probably people on either a New Game Plus cycle with very low soul level, or folks with, uh, who, who made new characters just to mess about with that. Notice that there were three of them, too, so they were luring us in. We don't lose our ember or anything, though. Right, right, right. Thank you. This is a uh, Slave Knight Gale. We'll talk to him in a bit. First things first. Blue Sentinels. There we go. Wait. You've... You've the same scent as that woman. Then you must be an action one. He's a very old, very experienced knight, uh, questing after... I'm pretty sure it's the original Dark Soul. how long I've searched. Oh, 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 Don't mind me. Didn't mean to fall apart. Now, Ashen One, I have a kindness to ask of you. My lady lives in the cold land of Ariandel. I need you to show her flame. I'm gonna give you three guesses as to what the land of Ariandel is. The rot away. If you truly are Ash, then it must be fire that you seek. Oh, uh, sure, why not? And he's going to send us there. We are not going to explore Ariandel right now, though. We're saving that for the post-game. Just a moment, then. The painting of Ariandel. Yep. Well, it's the painted it's world of Ariamis. Go on. Take it. OMC shared uh, a photo of their city, and it looks really impressive. Wow. Good job, man. MC says, I knew the painted world was in the game. Yep, it's the first DLC, and it's not terrible, but not exactly great either. The second DLC is fantastic. And then the ashes were too. But it's like, why, man? <laughs> Not only would you put the painted world back in, I mean, I guess that's fine, but you're gonna make me pay for it. Priscilla isn't here, for the record. She's, a. Uh, am pretty sure she's long dead. No, the Christmas special in the stream's title refers to the area behind Lord Wolner's altar. Yep, the Corvians are here, but they're not all hostile. <sighs> Looks a bit like the entryway to the Nightmare Frontier in Bloodborne, right? MC says, is the nice thing about Cliff Empire is that even if I'm not great with style, everything looks great in that game. No, it does, and it looks like you've actually got some pretty solid construction lined up. Like, I mean, the layout of the city seems very practical. Ah. Ah, have you just arrived? How very unusual. Just how long has it been? 
So the idea behind this DLC is pretty interesting. The painting itself and the world within is slowly rotting. Like, as it ages, it's being, like, moth-eaten and fading fast, and the world itself is, like, falling apart. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. Ah, you're no exception. We've all seen terrible things. But you're safe now. Let it ease your burden. And so the ultimate goal here is to find some kind of flame that a magical being can use to burn the painted world away and make a new one. We got the Rhyme Blue Moss Clumps. They, uh... I'm being summoned to another world as part of the Blue Sentinels now? Are you kidding me? Bonfire! Bonfire! <laughs> of course. Man, maybe playing online was a mistake. <laughs> I think I'm starting to remember why I was playing offline. <laughs> I know, I know not every Covenant has this kind of mechanic, but way more of them in Dark Souls 3 do than did in Dark Souls 2. What? Uh, oh. We, uh... We might have kind of sort of won. What on earth is that they've got orbiting them? Uh, player? Player, you want to help? I, I would love it if my host would help out a little bit. We've been invaded? What? Oh, hell with this area. MC says parry noob. Well, he only needs to hit once. This is a nightmare. Oh, getting out that great sword, because every Dark Souls PvP -er has a great sword. Dude, come on. What is he doing? It's like he's taunting me more than actually trying to fight. Which, I mean, based on what I know of Dark Souls PvP community, that... that makes sense. Thanks there, Blue Magic! What is going on?! There's like a dozen people in here, it feels like! I mean, I did my part. Wait, Prince Omri is... No, he's not the same guy that invaded me earlier. That was Sir something or another, wasn't it? Uh, really? They're all just... God damn you. Another invader. Yo, host, you actually gonna help us here? God almighty. Seth says, oh, come on, if you started 20 minutes earlier, I'd have raided you. It's... it's alright. I... I did not want to do this. I, uh... I just kept getting summoned 
because I found out this afternoon, or I realized I'd been playing offline the whole time, so I was like, oh, we want to see messages and all that, sure. Uh, forgot that PvP on this game is exceedingly popular, and most of the covenants I have access to automatically summon you into other worlds, so I've just been getting abducted left, right, and center. I do not like those big fight clubs. I, I like... Okay, so there's this special covenant in Dark Souls 2 that allows you, the player, to effectively serve as the boss of a small dungeon where all of the enemies are uh, allied to you, they will not attack you, where, um, I'll tell you what, Warrior Sunlight, there you go, where um, you can use the trophies gleaned from your victories to expand the dungeon with more traps and enemies and things like that. So, yeah, no, I, I have been abducted. Hey, Exit, how's it going, man? Glad to see you guys. I hope you guys had a, gr a good rest of the stream. Sorry I couldn't stick around as long. I had to get rid of, or take care of, get rid of, same deal. A little bit of paperwork. We should be good for the evening, though. Right. Now that we're finally done with that, back to the Cleansing Chapel one more time. No, oh, thank you, Seth. I'll try to I'll try to make the next one definitely. I should be free aside from my own streams most of the day tomorrow, and definitely should have quite a bit of free time on Monday. So first we got abducted by Slave Knight Gale, then we got abducted twice by Covenants. Now we can actually do what we're here for. You may recall we spent an exorbitant amount of money on the Katarina armor, but we're not going to use it. No, no, no. See, you come right over here. Hello. Anyone there? Anyone Seth says you need to eat more so you're harder to abduct. I um okay, hold on, hold on. I can I can fix this. I can fix this. Oh, come on. There we go. Totally unabductable. Exit Dust Ass never played Fat Princess. I, I know the game, I just... I don't think I've ever played it myself. So it's our buddy Siegvard, and Patches was able to get his armor by knocking him out, stripping him, and then throwing him down the well. I'm loath to admit it, but I've been had. Someone's swiped my armor. Did you happen to see it anywhere? Yeah, absolutely, and we can return it all. Which we shall do. <laughs> oh, my armor. My deepest gratitude. I am Siegfried of Katarina, Sergio. With my trusty suit of armor, I'll be out of here in a jiffy. So, one of the reasons in lore for the Onion Knights being A, such great pals, and B, so incredibly, like, uh, unlucky, is that Katarina, their homeland, is compared to almost everywhere else in the setting, a land completely without problems. They come from the happiest, wealthiest, most celebratory land in the entire world. MC says unlucky or limited. Oh no, genuinely unlucky. These these poor guys wander into traps uh, that otherwise would have caught us if not for like the grace of God every 30 minutes on average. Now that we finally bailed him out, we'll be able to continue his quest line down the road. But first things first, finally back to High Lord Volner. And uh, you'll remember earlier I talked about one particular part of this game where... Like, the otherwise excellent geographical continuity kind of breaks down. It's right here. So, remember, deep underneath Farron Woods, we find the remnants of Carthus, this ancient kingdom in the middle of a desert. It is a, like, scorched wasteland um, realm. And that's fine, I guess. Like, it could have just been here from long, long ago. But directly on the other side of the desert... And, of course, past some pretty cool little transitory areas. 
is the Dark Souls Christmas special and the most gorgeous area probably in the entire game, if I'm being honest, DLC included. This is Irithyll of the Boreal Valley, and it is the headquarters of both uh, Pontiff Sullivan, the demented cleric responsible for the abduction and mutation of innocent people into outrider knights and spider beasts and things like that, as well as St. Aldrich. The pontiff is holed up in that gorgeous cathedral dead ahead, whereas Aldrich is up above the clouds. This city is beautiful, the level is exceedingly well designed, doesn't feel like it's gone on too long. Exit says you can see other places you've been from here too. Oh yeah, I know, I know. It's like, I guess it's Karthus that doesn't make any sense being here. Like, Irithyll kind of does. Seth says, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me mini boss in the pantry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with that, ain't we? Um, so the city's gorgeous. Uh, I love the enemies here. I love the encounters. It's challenging, but not excessively so. You have the most striking architecture in the entire game, probably. But that's only Sullivan's half of the area. Aldrich's half is up there, and, uh... Oh, I really don't like what's up there. Ipsy says, I hope to get the snow event in Cliff Empire soon. Oh, what's that? Tell us more. Want to see my snow city? Oh, yeah, that sounds gorgeous. So there's nothing over here, but remember, we need a doll. The, the little doll we got from Aldrich's... Uh, Seth says, just skip it. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. We need the little doll from Aldrich's, uh, sarcophagus to penetrate the barrier. Oh no, Exit says you could skip the dog beast if you run to the shield. No, 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 I'm gonna try to kill it here. I'm gonna try to kill it here. I was saying I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, not for gameplay reasons. Strictly because I'm a massive Dark Souls lore nerd and it drives me insane. Okay, here we go. So the Pontiff has a little welcoming uh, wagon for us in the form of one of his hounds. They're the worst. They don't respawn. They're just incredibly powerful, very, very fast beasties. They also have, like, lightning breath, so that's, that's a thing. Now, we can, and in fact you're kind of encouraged to do this, just run straight from the dog past the barrier into the, the city, because the barrier will not let this thing in. No! No! So you'll see the, kind of, the what makes this so difficult is so many of its attacks have a really good uh, amount of coverage on the horizontal axis. And like a lot of enemies in this game in particular, well, bosses and mini-bosses, it seems to kind of spam the same maneuvers if you stay in the same place, but we got it. And we got the Pontiff's Right Eye Ring. Nice. Now, if we didn't fight and kill that thing here, we would have to traverse kind of that... Well, it's not exactly a moat, is it? But that marsh later. And we would have to fight it there. MC says, basically, Cliff Empire has events that modify some of the parameters. Loud, uh, or no, uh, causing less sunlight, more winds, rain causing more wind, water, uh, and marauders attacking, and you have to handle a specific task along with each of these, like, world state changes. I see. Snow just adds, like, aesthetic appeal. I got you. I I'm all for that. I live in, like, the middle of Tennessee. Snow is, like, a myth to us. Like, like there are some of us who could have sworn, like, as a result of the Mandela effect, we saw snow once. Not all of us, we're not in agreement on that, but some of us think it actually happened here at one time. Look at this place though, would you? It's absolutely gorgeous. Now thanks to our doll, we're gonna be able to walk right on through and get another bonfire. Dark Souls 3 is very generous with its checkpoints and I do appreciate that. Uh, while we're here, why don't we check out that ring? Boosts attacks as long as attacking persists. So more powerful attacks, the more consecutive hits you get off in kind of a combo, I suppose. Bewitched ring that Pontiff Sullivan bestowed upon his knights. Knights who peer into the black orb are lured into battles of death, transformed into frenzied beasts. No wonder the Pontiff only provides these rings to those dispatched to foreign lands. 
I think the Pontiff's uh, left eye is obtainable with Fort Soul, is that right? Or is that also the right eye? Here we are in gorgeous central Irithyll. Uh, you, you guys will have to forgive me. I'm going to be geeking out over the scenery the entire time we're here. This is just breathtaking. And of course, it's also where we're going to find the most um, enemies and hazards that can inflict frostbite outside of the DLC, I want to say. What do we have down here? Rhyme Blue Moss Clump, already helping us out in that regard. Now as we head up here, we're going to- oh, check this out. Looks familiar, eh? Almost like a, a Ruin Sentinel or something? So Irithyll's a gorgeous city, but as we're going to see, it's also haunted as hell because of the things uh, Sullivan and Aldrich have done here. These are their guards, the, the Pontiff Knights. They're exceedingly fast and very dexterous, but kind of frail knights, wielding curved swords and I think scythes later on. A lot of dex weapons. Along with some pretty resilient light armor. Is that right? Like, I, I want to say I remember the Pontiff's Knight armor being really good for its weight class. Oh yeah, they can also, like, just vomit pure evil at you. That's, that's a thing. They're not that resilient, but they really don't have to be. Now remember, after going to the Undead Settlement, Greyrot was somehow able to get his hands on some of their gear. Which, uh, trust me, ain't the easiest thing in the world to do. My first time playing this game, I went through, I think, with just straight Pontiff's Knight gear. Like, their scimitar, or their curved sword, was my go-to weapon. It is really, really good, for the record. I definitely see a ton of inspiration from the level design of Frozen Elium Lois here, don't you? Time to meet the most dangerous enemies here. These guys, the Irithylian citizens, or the dregs. They're basically um, enslaved uh, abductees, uh, absconded with at childhood by Aldrit, or um, Sullivan and his knights, and brought here not only to toil away constructing and maintaining Irithyll, but to be used as fodder for fell rituals of the church. Hence why they are now darkness-fueled wraiths. With, like, some awesome glam rock hair. A bunch of them are also invisible at all but close range. Those guys are nasty. That's a fire witch, a ranged caster, basically, who specializes in very unique pyromancies. You'll hardly ever find them alone, and that's because once you get them in close combat range, they're really not that bad. Monster-looking swords, don't they? Alright, so now it should just be the Fire Witch. Their armor is really good as well, I should add. Of course, I think all armor that looks cool is really good, so I'm a poor judge in that regard. Notice that they stagger pretty easily, too. A budding green blossom, just a more powerful version of the standard blossom, I want to say. Oh dear. Some of them have like a magic buff on their sword, but other than giving them that AoE, I don't think it does anything, does it? Maybe a little bit additional damage. Uh, moss clumps, alright. Oh boy. 
usually when you see a fire witch, that should be priority number one, at least in my experience. Oh, still didn't drop anything. Dang it. Large Titanite Shard. We can make use of that. Ooh. Special attack. I think we can use that attack with their sword as well. It's part of the weapon art. No! No! Oh man, he got me right up against the geometry. Totally cornered. That's what you need to be aware of when you fight the uh, Pontiff's Knights. They're really, really relentless. They're not, they're not that tough, or resilient, I should say. But uh, if you let them get the, the upper hand, you're going to stay on the back foot for a while. Let's eat another one of these. Can't even be upset about that, though, because that gives me another opportunity to earn some Pontiff Knight gear. Oof. There we go. Do love that our kick is able to just knock shields out of the way so easily in Dark Souls 3. It's much harder to break poise with a kick in earlier games, I want to say. Didn't Dark Souls 3 infamously have, like, quote-unquote, no poise at launch or something like that? We'll need to get in here through the other way, but we definitely want to take out that evangelist at some point. She's got special gear. Soul of a weary warrior. I feel that. Exit says two squats. I saw that. All right, all right, you know what? Hey, screw it. Okay. I'll... You don't have any visuals for this, but I will. It's... It ain't been that long. All right. And there we are. Hey, my, my pleasure. I Honestly, I, I, I just go to sleep every night with this elliptical machine I got near the start of the pandemic over in the corner judging me, so I might as well get some exercise out of this. <laughs> MC says, beep, beep, goes the glucose meter. I ain't that out of shape now. <laughs> no, man, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, did I miss a, a treasure here? I most certainly did. Large soul. Okay. Now, the, the difficult thing about working out um, as a type 1 diabetic is, well, okay, most types of activity, especially cardio, the stuff that's very good for burning, like, stray fat, and, like, uh, the types of calisthenics that are really good for, say, tightening up uh, the limbs or the core, invariably leads to lower blood glucose over time. And what's the solution for hypoglycemia? Well, eating, of course. Uh, typically eating things very rich in carbs and healthy fats. So, like, it is a, it is a protracted process for me to lose weight, but... Uh, I actually have since the start of the pandemic. I've lost like four ish pounds. Which is fine. I don't really need to lose a, a whole lot to be ideal, I don't think. Come on, guys. 
right this way. One thing I really appreciate about the katana's moveset is that on the the backswing, Jesus, that, that's why we watch out for the fire witches. Uh, on the backswing, on that second hit, you get uh, such great coverage to the side. Hope everybody's having a good day, by the way. I understand for, for most of you guys, I'll be reaching you at the end of your day, but I hope you've had a good day. Then. Seth says backswing Jesus is horrible. <laughs> oh, you mean the pontiff. I am... I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm terrified of that fight right now. Because I fought him twice on my own before. Like, I've, I've helped friends, like, when me and my two best uh, childhood friends played through this together, we, we all kind of, like, helped each other. But I fought him twice on my own and gotten two very, very different experiences out of it. Okay, Exit kind of has a point here. We can definitely two-hand it for these guys. Like, my cowardice precludes me from doing it for anything else, but we, we could definitely two-hand the sword for those guys. Exit says, I'm still curious why you're not uh, two-handing that katana and unlocking the whole moveset. I... There's something about a shield that is psychologically comforting more than it is, like, a, a physical boon. That and so many of the enemies in Dark Souls 1 will absolutely annihilate like a non-tanky build if they don't have some kind of shield, so... It's like learned behavior. One of the things I love about the Pontiff Knights is when defeated, they don't like kind of ragdoll as most of the other enemies do, kind of going slack. They just stiffen up. Hold on. Well, I can't show you this, but they just kind of stiffen up for a second, and then all at once, whack, straight to the ground. Exit says, all my playthroughs of Dark Souls 3 were without a shield, and Bloodborne trained me well. Oh, yeah, no, Bloodborne is a, a merciless but effective teacher, definitely. And Seth says, that's what she said. There's, as I've said, we will, we will need to keep a running counter of the moments of that nature these playthroughs inevitably contain. Armor of the Pontiff's Knights now harrowed spirits of Irithyll. This blue-gray armor, shrouded in a thinly cold air, is light and brittle. Well, we're wearing it just to, to rock the local flavor. Irithylian armor, this is not the only set of it we can find, is, like, uniformly gorgeous. As I said, this is basically Dark Souls' take on a fairy kingdom. Uh... Re represented slightly more accurately in uh, European folklore than, say, the stereotypical cartoonish depiction of, say, fairies or the fae. Um, they are slightly otherworldly, long-lived humanoid creatures that abduct certain children born with their marks shortly after birth and reside in a magically protected uh, sort of esoteric realm absolutely loaded to the gills with all kinds of powerful, but very dangerous magic. I would, I would totally vacation here, though. I mean, I'm not gonna let all the evil, like, blood sacrifice and rituals stop me. I'd, I'd check this place out. We're actually not too, too terribly far from the boss. Irithyll's unique in that, uh, more or less directly on the other side of Pontiff Sullivan's boss gate, which is right up there, uh, it'll spit us out a stone's throw from the second Lord of Cinder, and there's an, another path we can take below the city, like through the moat and all that, I think, to reach the third Lord of Cinder. So, if we do this properly, we'll fight two and then three, one after the other. Uh-oh, we've got... We've got two Flame Witches on us. That's one Flame Witch on us. 
there's a massive procession of like Erythelian knights over here. We kind of want to avoid aggroing all at once. Doing a bang up job of that, by the way. Uh, real quick, before we continue along this certain path to death, we are going to truck it right on over here to this chapel, the Church of Yorshka, and uh, tap a bonfire real, real quick. Does this architecture look kind of familiar? I can tell you we've seen something like this before. Proof of a Concord kept. Great, we've got another one of those. And here's our friend Henri, without Horace, unfortunately. Oh, I thought it might be you. Good to see you. I never managed to find Horace. Oh, oh, well, th th that's a real shame. Mm-hmm. De de definitely don't know anything about that. For the children I knew. We've not found him yet, but Horace is near Smoldering Lake, completely hollowed. I don't know why we didn't uh, run into him yet, but... My foolish request, and also a token of protection. May the flames guide your way. We get the Ring of the Evil Eye associated with Astora. Ah. This, uh... Indeed. Man, this quest line does not make you feel good. I would do well to learn from you. It does if you complete the quest line itself without doing the Londor um, uh, chain. But we're doing both. And I can tell you right now, based off of my full understanding of the lore, the Londor ending is the good one. Okay? Like, no, no question. It's what's best for just about everybody in this world. But unlike the dark themed endings of earlier games, we're going to have to do at least one absolutely horrible thing in order to get it. Or maybe a better better way of putting it is we're going to have to let something horrible happen. All right, now let's let's saw down the Erythelians. I love those really grand flourishes of the blades. Really clearly telegraphed, but man does it look cool. That, that's a bad idea. Oh, I just need to, to kite the knight. There's no way the, the Fire Witch is moving that much, but... The ones with the shields seem way more passive. Which, you know, that makes sense, right? Thank you so much. We're doing we're doing okay so far. We're doing okay so far. Now it's just the fire witch. I'm kind of curious as to what their reason for being here is. Like this is this is the requisite ice level. Maybe remnants of Gwen's religion left behind. Because Aldrich and Friends used to be part of, like, another religion entirely. One of these, or somewhere around here, there is an illusory railing. The only one of its kind in the series, I want to say. Oh, maybe somewhere over here? Yeah, 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 yeah. God, 
God, there's so much to explore here. They really did a great job of packing these areas densely with unique items and things. Oh no, here it is. Here it is. My bad. It was a wall. Magic clutch ring? I'll take it. I think the only piece of their gear that isn't pretty good for the, the type of gear it is would be the shield, yeah? The, the shield gets pretty bad coverage across the board, I want to say. That one was straight through the shield, for instance. And what do we have here? A lightning gem. Nice. We'll need to drop down to get whatever's up on this dais. MCS, can you at least gain a Santa outfit in this area? Unfortunately, no. That that would be awesome. Or even if it was like a dark, twisted take on what is clearly a Santa outfit, like uh, Mr. Sax from Fallen London. Uh, but no, no such luck, I'm afraid. MC says the Jester, but like a snow version. Oh, that would be so cool. This is the end of yet another classic Dark Souls. Um... Dark Souls platforming challenge. Steph says, or the Santa from Happy. Yeah, yeah, either or. We, we need something like that. Come on, FromSoft. So we got another roster, one of these Covenant rosters. The Roster of Knights. Online play item. A, no a roster of Knights of the Dark Moon who have served since the age of the old royals. Used to discover the names of Dark Moon Knights. An order of elite knight shrouded in shadows. Yeah, so, uh... Here's a problem. The Dark Moon Blades are in this game. You know, the Covenant that fulfilled the same exact function as the Blue Sentinels who are also in this game? So... Again, just to say, here's a Dark Souls 1 thing, they effectively duplicated a Covenant with a different Covenant Master, different, different badge, different everything, uh, but with the same exact function, with, I think, some different rewards for leveling it up. That's, that's about it. Oh, we got dogs here, by the way. Dogs still holding it down. It's been a while. MC says that made me think of a Clown Whisper concept. I am so tempted to go with that, but... That might be my backup. That might be my backup. Oh wait, these... hold on. Are these actually, like, dogs or... no? No, they... Yes, they are. Yeah, they've just got... Massive fangs, for some reason. They look almost like a patchwork of different types of animal skeletons. Like something you'd see in Yargul in Bloodborne. Huh, it's a fog wall, is it? No, it ain't. But you always gotta check. You always gotta check. MC says, I do have a whisper backup, but I'll keep it a mystery. Alright, cool, cool. I have a feeling, like, at least early on, uh, like, Eldritch Ghost Wrangling experts are actually going to be really handy in, like, hand-to-hand, -hand, or, uh, head-to-head -head confrontations. Hello! You actually did get the jump on me, but I was just very, very lucky and walked away at the last minute. Try Gorgeous View. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, check that out. God, the, the level designers blew themselves away with this area. I'm, I'm gobsmacked. MC says cutters have a thing to punch ghosts. Oh, no, no, no. I saw. I saw. But not everybody's a cutter, and not every cutter has taken a level in punching ghosts. There's a corby in here, for some reason, at this headstone. With just a bunch of homeward bones and an undead bone shard behind it. That's what I'm talking about. MC says hounds have ghost ammo. That sounds like slightly more of a problem. Oh, yeah, no, no, MC, I, I gotcha. It's, uh... 
Again, it's just one of those things where I hope, gee, I hope if we act for by whatever circumstance just happen to have two whispers in the party, then every single enemy we go up against won't somehow have the anti-ghost abilities. Okay, so I think our next stop is just going to be down here in like the... the Undercroft. That is absolutely overrun with Irithelian slaves. Poor folks. Oh, what do they drop, though? Blue bug pellets, okay. Oh, that one fell from the rafters, I guess. It's the ones on their feet we gotta watch for. Some of them, I think, have casting capabilities, right? MC says, I think you saw more of the Eldritch Horror and less of the do crimes aspect of the game. No, 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 I totally got that, but that's, like, totally understandable. Got him. MC says a whisper could op literally open a door on the back of a bank to access the vaults. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm well aware of just how useful we could be situationally speaking. But it is going to be like most mage type classes, a situational thing. Oh, that one was actually a standard uh, Erythelian Wraith in disguise. What's up here? Seriously, I have totally forgotten. Another Shriving Stone? Okay. That might actually come in handy later on. Oh, and one of the Erythelians capable of casting spells. They're, they're fine. Don't worry, they're just fine. Okay. And she says, just making sure there's a lot of aspects in that game. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna take... Well, those of us who haven't played it before anyway, I'm sure. A little bit of time to get used to all of them, because it seems... Like, uh... The, the gameplay loop itself isn't that complicated, but all of the systems working under the hood definitely are. Try down? Uh, not right now, thanks. So this, I think, ultimately isn't the way to, to Sullivan, but it is the way to another bonfire that we can use to circumvent some encounters later on. Or, not circumvent, circumvent having to... Sorry, let me try that again now that I can English properly. Um, it'll allow us to bypass some respawning enemies and things like that when we have to come through for the, uh, the third Lord of Cinder. Hear that noise? That noise means fun, kids. Seth says your English is gooder. It... Well, you know, it's so different speaking and attempting to react to something totally extemporaneously and, say, having to speak off the cuff when there's absolutely no other sensory stimuli you're having to cope with. Um... I'm... I'm like... 
listening to myself like when I'm uploading or uh, gathering information on old streams so I can get a good description to upload them as VODs, I'm like, God almighty, I'm a teacher? Seriously? Um, but it's a whole different beast, right? Than just, say, sitting on the radio and speaking in a totally empty room with no distractions for uh, 60, 90 seconds at a time. And by the way, those things are in here, like these giant human centipede looking thingies. Uh, they're not that dangerous individually. They're almost never here individually. MC says, my English is Gouda. Oh, good for you. That sounds amazing. Uh, and Exit says, if I'm tired, I can only speak English with a heavy Dutch accent. But still, like, that's, that's perfectly cool. I just tend to get... Well, you guys have seen my streams. I, I am a high-strung person, and I get panicky and start stutter stuttering and stammering all over the place. Which I normally would be right here, but I don't think I'm going to be because the dog is already dead. Seth says same with a heavy Slavic accent. Like my name is Svetlana and I'm a prostitute. <laughs> Like I said, I can, I can speak one language, well, my own language, something near fluently, and very, very conversational, probably heavily broken Mandarin. MC says, don't worry, Exit, we may end up streaming Blades in the Dark on this stream with two euro on the table. So, uh, no, I, I will say this, um, like this community to a T, uh, probably has like conversational fluency that matches, uh, matches my own and honestly exceeds that of a whole, whole lot of students and even some faculty I've been around. Y'all, y'all are great. Like just all around, y'all are fantastic. Okay, so sewer time. The biggest threat in the sewer, this sewer anyway, is going to be a lot of these human centipede things. Seth says, Donka Sean. No problem. Not a problem. Oh, ooh, yeah, I forgot about that attack. They can mess you up if you want. MC says, merci beaucoup. This is... Okay, so, hold on, I'm going to have to kill this thing, then I'm going to try my level best. Uh, I'm actually not super familiar with Dutch, which you think would be weird, right? Like, oh, I study uh, colonialism and global empire and things like that. But Exit says... Hartelijk dank. Hartelijk dank. I think. I am certain I mispronounced that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god, weapon at risk. No, 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 no. Why now? Repair powder. <laughs> So there's like a little a little cell of them here. Ah, I see, I see. Uh, one second. One more, one more of them, then we'll get some loot. Or should get some loot? No? As it says, the accent goes on the har. From Hartelik. Um, I think we've got everything that's in the sewer, right? No, hold on. There, there might be another pathway out of here. And there is... Exit says the rest of the... Uh, 
pronunciation is on point. Thank you. I'll I'll get there. Th I'm actually so grateful to have you guys around because at the very least maybe we can pick up a few a few things from each other. So we got uh now, now that we have enriched each other intellectually, let's look at this shit-covered hand. <laughs> Unclean umbral ash coated with excrement. Oh, to savor the sweet pungency, but once more. Okay, sure. Oh, and look who's here. Making some nice Estes soup. Excuse me, I... I must have dozed off. It's rather warm in here. Well, well, hasn't it been all too long? It's good to see you. Oh, I seem to have missed my chance, so... I, Siegfried of Katarina, offer my... Yeah, but do you offer more alcohol? And a little surprise to go with it. It's all yours. Oh no, a miracle. I know. That's the Once same thing. I make a fine Esther soup. I've got some stewing right now. Already ahead of you. We ate are it all. We deserve a little normalcy from time to time. And finally, upon this rendezvous... Seth says we are intellectuals. Toast. Reading description of poop ashes. <laughs> well, I mean... Valor, that's not necessarily a, a common, duties. vulgar thing to do. We could, we could read into that. Now may the sun shine. We could mm, ruminate on the contrasting social significances of and definitions of, say, um, uncleanliness and the taboo in, like, global cultures. Have you heard somewhere? Hidden right here. I'd like to remind you I am tasked with the education of young people for some reason. And even below that, the profaned capital, home of Yom. Exit says, leave it, leave it up to Seth to read into anything. That reminds me. You're in good company, then. Y'all are in good company. To keep. Yeah, so he just gave us our marching orders once we're through with uh, Sullivan and Aldrich. Uh, the profane capital, where Yarm the Giant resides, is directly under this place. MC says, poop is a great fertilizer. And Seth says, y'all, I know. I know. I've got, to, I've got so, to give the people what they want. I'm afraid I... Exit says, Greyrod is going to die now, though. Is he? Well, not the only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> like, was I, was I not supposed to save him first? Some of the quest lines in this game are extremely precise with their expectations. Oh, Exit says, yeah, if you send him to loot and Siegfried isn't here, Grey Rot will die here. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, but, like, okay, I guess? Oh, and look! Look where we are! Exit says you advance Sieg to the profane capital. Ah, oh, damn it, that's, that's a shame, but at least we get to complete his quest line. So, uh, MC, does this place look familiar? It should. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's almost time for Brady to start getting his dander up about lore. Here's one of the Silver Knights. Still loads of fun to fight, of course. MC says, and Orlando. Yep, sure is. Now, the city itself, Irithyll, is not an Orlando, but this section of it is. It's like kind of built beneath Anne Orlando. And the Silver Knights, by the way, are probably more fun than ever to fight because now they can charge their weapon up with an electrical aura. And, oh no, MC says no, and not Londo. Well, yes, this is very, very good. Correct. Silver Knight gauntlets, yeah. Exit says big chest ahead, of course. It's, yeah, this is the same portrait of Guinevere that we could have found, I think, in the first game. This might actually be just like modified concept art of her. So, as I said, the fan service is about to get real heavy. Real heavy. They even brought like the Dragon Slayer Great Bows back and now use them in much closer range, which I think is kind of kind of neat. Hey buddy. Come on. Exit says hammer time. Oh my god! 
Wow. <laughs> and an arrow through the chest for... For good measure. That's all right. Wasn't expecting that. Exit says hammer time. Yeah, no, uh, we can get it there, but we have to clear out the knights first. But I was going to say I was just going to go to Pontiff now, but we kind of sort of need those souls. Yeah, here we go. We've had a great run in Irithel so far, though. I'm, I'm quite pleased with our progress. anything down here or is this just an alternate path my yeah this is just an alternate path we're good goodbye bye 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 let's uh let's actually crack open that next bonfire while we're at it hey MC says, you know, this game just gave me a great idea for fan service, one that's already been done in other games. What's that? And, uh, while you write that out, some trivia I'd like to share. Uh, so Kingsfield, like the first major RPG series that FromSoft published, and that, uh, this game series was, or took a lot of inspiration from, actually has more continuities to Dark Souls lore and all of that, or at least design-wise, uh, than I would have thought. See, as it happens, the second game's final boss, like the true final boss, if you do everything right and all that, is blow for blow, like pixel for pixel, it's Black Dragon Calamite. So they brought him back to serve as a bonus boss at the tail end of the first game's DLC, which I think is, that is primo fan service. It was also a character, too, then, that hadn't been seen for, like, over a decade, I want to say. That's, that is some good stuff right there. I had no idea. Y'all might want to call an exterminator at some point. Just, just saying. MC says accessing a Dark Souls One complete game with revamped uh, mechanics inside a painting of this game and have the main game separated. Oh man, if they could fit all of that onto one disc, that would be glorious. That is a good idea. Oh, and that, that Silver Knight doesn't respawn. Most of them do. Maybe maybe these guys don't? That's interesting. Never noticed that before. Uh oh. MC says they did it somewhat for Yaxa. Did they? Without run and space harrier. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be really cool. I mean obviously Dark Souls 1 is a would be way more complicated to do that with than those games, both of which are fantastic in the Oxa series, to be fair. Um, that, that'd be brilliant. Or even just having it as, like, um, a standalone application that you can download for free if you have uh, a, a copy or maybe a complete game of Dark Souls 3. Hope everybody's having a great day, by the way. I just noticed we got uh, a couple more viewers. Welcome, welcome to the stream. So happy to have you. Hope you're having a great day or night thus far. We get the Dragon Slayer Great Bow from him, as well as some Titanite. These are like just jars of frost, I think. I will say, I do really like the look of Ann Orlando's architecture in uh, in 3D. None of these are mimics, hey? All right, all right. 
I will accept your premise. The Leo Ring, used by, um, uh, Dragon Slayer, Slayer Ornstein, Smoff's Great Hammer, and the Divine Blessing. That is not a bad set of loot, all in all. Let's check out the new ring. I don't think we're gonna use it, but yeah, strengthens thrust weapon counterattacks. This would have been perfect for our Dark Souls 1 build. Exit says hammer. Oh, we have nowhere near the strength to wield it. We've barely got enough strength to use the Black Blade, but I will show it off really quick. Ring associated with Dragon Slayer Ornstein, one of the four knights of Gwyn, the first lord. Uh, Ornstein was the first knight of the sun's eldest born, and his cross spear is said to have pierced scales made of stone. So this, hand of fate, friends, is the OG huge hammer. Twisted great hammer associated with Smoff, the last knight to remain at his post guarding the ruined cathedral. Restores HP while attacking, a carryover from Smoff's past as an executioner. Look at the size of this thing! This is just... This is ridiculous. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to agree with Seth here. Fuck this hammer. Yeah, it, it looks really cool, but it takes up a pretty significant amount of your screen with, like, its head while it's on screen. And, uh, it's very slow. It's very, very, very slow. As it would be, right? It's, it's Smuff's great hammer. And you even get his silly little jump attack as the R2... Um, or charged R2. I do like that. Um, what we're using? Uchi. Exit says it's beautiful. It was really good in the first game, though. Really, really good in the first game, according to a lot of people. MC says Hand of Fate's hammer is better, but Thunderstrike is better yet. Yeah. Yeah, Thunderstrike was great. I just... I have this affinity for Huge Hammer because you know, you saw him see at the very beginning of this whole thing, Huge Hammer always came through for me when I needed something like, like one magic card up my sleeve, like hit points away from death, always drew Huge Hammer and it always delivered. Gotta respect that. Oh yeah, there's, there's an Erythelian slave slinging. I think they might just be regular soul arrows at us. These aren't, like, soul darts or anything. MC says, yeah, I saw you always got it for each challenge, and we always got it when we needed it most. Did did we end up beating the game with Huge Hammer? I hope so. Damn dogs. Fairly certain they make mail carriers play this game as training. MC says, I think it was with Thunderstriker. Yeah, maybe. It was with one of the, the crazy hammer weapons. If y'all want a game where heavy weapons are not only, like, really practical, but also probably far and away the best option, like, objectively, play you some uh, Hand of Fate or Hand of Fate 2. Got some awesome heavy weapon mechanics for that game. Or those games, I should say. MC says the best weapon in the game is probably the Dragon Sword. Don't think we ever got that one, though. So you can see how this, this encounter works, right? Low damage arrows constantly, like, pelting you. Just pick them off one at a time. Easy peasy, no muss, no fuss. Of course. Now we did open ourselves up a little shortcut here, I, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will take us back out to the square. Hooray for lift. MC says, huge hammer, damage 35, abilities holy. Dragon tongue, damage 35, abilities fire damage. I think huge hammer's ability, at least for our cannon, should just be deliverance. Is there an item over here? Yes, there is. Just ignore that blood stain. It ain't nothing to worry about. More titanite? Okay. Exit Dust says, uh, Yato's Great Hammer is sexy as hell, though. I... 
I don't know that I've ever had that weapon. Oh, Lado. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Um, I still don't know that I've ever run into that weapon personally, but I've seen in the game's DLC. Yeah, then I probably haven't got it myself. I've beaten Ashes of Ariandel. I have not ever completed uh, Ring City. Because, again, I think I just either got bored or I was waiting on one of my friends to catch up so we could co-op it together, and they never did. Something like that. But I love what I played it of it. It's got my favorite armor set in the entire game. What's down here? Blue Bug Palace? MC says, also hand to fate. Dragon Ring. While all relics are equipped, receive 50% uh, max health and full healing after every combat. Yeah, no, the dragon ring is what just breaks the dragon relics in half. Like, that's insane. Man, I bet for uh, for Endless Adventure, that is the way to go, isn't it? Like, full dragon set, if you can get it. This is my one day off this week. Starting tomorrow, I'm delving into the next book on my reading list, which I'm really looking forward to. It's a very, very short little, like, early American murder history called, uh, I believe it's Igniting King Philip's War, the John Sassamon murder trial. Uh, explores, like, the conflict between, like, European colonials and, um, Native Americans, uh, treatment of Native Americans within the legal system. Uh investigation and like quote-unquote true crime in early America really looking forward to that Seth says oh cool I love reading yeah no I do as well just in grad school you run into this very weird phenomenon where no instructor ever assigns books that are really good or that they like they always assign the most controversial or methodically uh, rich books in their um, area of expertise meaning most of the reading is either very dry or kind of spurious uh, but the stuff I read independently for my own research is absolutely amazing. I'm sure there's no bias inherent in that statement whatsoever. Oh my god. Oh my god. MC says, uh... Even the dragon torso just leaves behind a trail of fire that damages enemies. Yeah, that, that sounds broken as I'll get out. Um, hold on. Let me make sure there's nothing over here and I'll catch up on chat. Um, and Seth says, yes. Oh my god, yes. To be honest, I read those books ten years after. We had to read a lot of Russians. Um, some, some of those authors, uh, at least in the fields I work in, can be a little dry, but let me tell you, they have nothing on, like, humanity scholars from the United States, Great Britain, or France, like, from the mid-20th century through the present. If you want to talk about dry, if you want to talk about reiterative, just look at what academic structures present in those states in the modern era have been able to produce. <laughs> If you want to read a really, really good book exploring some of the, uh, not just issues, but also merits of contemporary Western paradigms of research, publication, and education, I would recommend, uh, well, there's a couple books, but what's the one? Hold on, let me go get it. Watch me get invaded and die while I'm, like, scurrying around in my bookshelves. Here we go. It is an anthology of short essays by indigenous Hawaiian academics published uh, uh, by University of Hawaii Press in go on, year, year, year 2016 called uh, Kanaka Iwi Methodologies, Mo'olelo, or we'll get to that in a minute, and metaphor. Um, it's an ingenious series of studies breaking down sort of the uh, 
the ways perhaps in which the American education system, or not the, the education system, so to speak, but the academy and its practices maybe could learn from traditional, uh, I shouldn't say traditional, I'm sorry, but uh, indigenous Kanaka or native Hawaiian uh, epistemologies, worldview, and means of uh, collecting, assessing, and disseminating knowledge amongst their communities. Um, there's some great stuff here by like geographers, political scientists, um, legal scholars, um, and that word, that um, Kanaka word in the title, mo'olelo, is a very, very diverse one that means simultaneously all of the following. Story, history, myth, legend, and I want to say sometimes even genealogy. There's a separate word for genealogy, but this can encapsulate that as well. Uh, because they are generally seen as like a cohesive whole in Kanaka societies. Um, Exit says, uh, it actually killed my enjoyment of reading. In school, we were only allowed to read books on the reading list, which killed all the joy. Oh man, that sounds rough. I'm sorry. That's dreadful. MC says, um, the novel Steppenwolf, this is the book I was recommended by one of my teachers in school and that I did read through. Seth says, Awaiting Godot was so boring. Never had to uh, read that, uh, thankfully. And Seth says, the only American we read was Salinger. I don't believe I've ever read uh, his work. I tend to read really esoteric stuff, like really, really esoteric stuff, or just like completely brainless, fun little fiction and nonfiction books. Like, one of my favorites is a coffee table book called The Worst Weapons Ever Made, which catalogs just that, some of the greatest failures in uh, ancient and modern military engineering. MCS, anyone read His Dark Materials? Uh, no. No, afraid not. What? Exit says that sounds fun. Oh, it is. It is. Um, one that particularly stands out to me is um, this French tank, or a French model of tank, uh, used in World War I that was notorious for its extremely long nose, that is to say a bit of the, the hull protruding beyond uh, the treads, that was so long that the tank would often just get stuck in trenches, like, like the nose would get itself stuck in. Hey, Potato, good to see you, man. Thank you for joining us. Oh man, I really should have opened the shortcut <laughs> before, uh, before rolling down to get the ring. Yikes. Um, we can still manage this, though. Shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. Here we go. Whew. This is why you've always got to watch out for fire witches, kids. Their range is, quite honestly, killer. Oh, but speaking of killer, get ready. We're gearing up for a really, really special fight. Considered by the fan base, as far as I'm aware, to be one of the better fights in the, the game, and honestly, probably one of the best duels in the series, it also has a reputation for being incredibly difficult. Uh, I've had two runs against this boss. Exodus, you gonna use the NPCs? Oh no. No, 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 no. Not unless I absolutely have to. Uh, let me tell you about my history with this boss, because I think it's... It's weird, but it's also, yeah, that's exactly what Brady's uh, playthroughs would be like. The very first time I fought this boss, it was alone, of course. I like to try bosses by myself for the first time, no matter what. And somehow or another, y'all have seen, I suck at these games. I got him on the first try. The second time, on my second playthrough, he took me about an hour and a half. I have no idea why. Absolutely nothing changed. Uh, except I might have been using a different build. MC says, uh... So apparently, uh, sorry, just getting caught up on chat. Uh, His Dark Materials has produced um, a, an awful film and a pretty decent TV show. Uh, 
Exit says, I read primarily horror and sci-fi. Right on. Agreed. Uh, Seth says, the books I usually read are fantasy sci-fi or historic books about witchcraft. As I practice myself. Oh, right on. Um, one of my, my very best friends does as well. I'm absolutely fascinated with religious tradition and spirituality the world over. And um, indigenous religious uh, practice and tradition is actually one of those things that I can't really incorporate extensively into my research beyond like a couple passages on worldview, but it's something I'm fascinated with. Exit Dust says I read a lot of King and Kuhn's books uh, when I was in college, in English, of course. Was there anybody I had to read a ton of, or, or just did read a ton of? Um, hmm. This is where Brady's incredible memory is no doubt going to just leave him clueless. Um, I've read just about everything published by, like, one of the great, uh, and, and he wrote primarily for, like, lay audiences. These were not, like, strictly academic books. I've read nearly everything published by the incredible Vine Deloria Jr., who was one of the first really prominent uh, Native American uh, practitioners of what we would consider ethno-history. Dude did everything, too, by the way. He was both... Or, he wasn't a religious leader, but he was very well educated in the tenets of... Uh, of uh, his his nation's uh, traditional religious practices and beliefs. He was an ordained, I want to say, Anglican priest. He was a political scientist, an attorney. He taught about four or five different uh, subjects at universities the world over and was a lifelong activist. MC says, I have a few programming books that I never read. Not that I need to. And Seth says, I have programming books just to look nice on the shelf. I learn code by doing. I, I love that I've got so many, like, tech experts in the chat, because you guys have no idea how little I know about technology and really, really appreciate that you guys not only are, you know, capable of doing that, but have a passion for it. I, I adore that. Rock on. I never made a PowerPoint. Hell, I didn't know how to make a PowerPoint until my junior year of college. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, 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 we're gonna level up, we're gonna level up. First things first, we're going to try hammering on this black blade a little bit more to see if we can't make it a bit stronger. Jeez, what? Oh dear. Um... This is going to be better, ultimately. Yeah, it is. Black Blade it is. It's now the superior sword. Just a little shorter, but not enough to cause us any substantial harm. Here, have some crap ash. Gracious. Passing fine ash, thou Now remember, the ash yes, from the, the individual who wanted to join up with the Undead Legion, she was like, really I now, I can't accept this. We can hardly gain any, like, <laughs> significant wares from this. If we hand her a severed hand just covered in human waste, she's like, ah, grace, gracious fine ash. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Oh, we can get High Lord Wolner's crown. Crown of Wolner, the Karthus Conqueror. Once upon a time, such things were bequeathed judiciously to each of the rightful lords until Wolner brought them to their knees and ground their crowns to dust. Then the crowns became one, and Wolner, the one High Lord. Zev says I'm a Java programmer, but I do a bit of Kotlin too. I've never heard of Kotlin, actually. Ashen one. Well, speak. Very All well. right, let's level up. Let's get three levels at least. Um, 
Oh, Sev says Android is based on Kotlin. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. This is what happens, I, I'm so sorry, when you're talking to somebody who's just a complete Luddite. I have no idea. Um, Seth says it used to be Java, then Android made Kotlin because they had to avoid lawsuits from Oracle. Oh jeez, really? Wait. Wait, that actually might sound kind of familiar. I remember Android being caught up in some kind of tech lawsuit. Well, actually, I remember Android being caught up in tech lawsuits more or less all the time. But that does sound kind of familiar. Let's, uh, where, oh, where shall we dump these? Um. Dexterity. Eh. Stamina. Tell you what, uh, dexterity is probably the way to go. Seth says, yeah, Android said, Oracle said Android belongs to them because it's written in Java. NMC says not actually true. Android uses C, but has a Kotlin layer for developers. You can actually have C, technically have C, or C++ uh, uh, plus support? C++? Plus plus, or C pound? That might be C++ plus or C++. Plus plus. I, I have no idea. C sharp. I see. I am so sorry. I am such, such a neophyte when it comes to all this. <laughs> It must be infuriating having somebody who knows absolutely nothing about any of this trying to try to say, oh, oh yeah, see, it's it's like this. Of course it's not. <laughs> As it says, I didn't see that coming. Seth says I can't go in C sharp because I have glasses. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, folks, are we ready for this? Trick question. I'm not ready for this. So, Pontiff Sullivan, let me attempt to provide some some foreground on this fight before we attempt it, because it's going to be fast and furious. One of the things I really appreciate about the way this fight is presented to you is that the Pontiff is a cleric. He's a priest used to ruling this really decadent, depraved church and city from a distance. He's a magic user, but... For whatever reason, he's going to be fighting us with a pair of enchanted swords. And since that's not really in his wheelhouse, he's going to be um, using a very stiff, kind of awkward style against us. Sounds easy, right? Well, no. His blades are very large and long. One is coated in uh, Dark Moon magic, the other in Righteous Flame. And his attacks tend to get really good arcs on them. Uh, and he's very, very large, even by the standards of, like, a standard quote-unquote humanoid NPC in this game. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, in the second phase, he's going to sprout these, like, decrepit, almost dead-looking wings that, yeah, resemble, like, like dead plant life, um, or dried-out tree bark or something. We'll begin flying, and we'll also summon in a clone, so... Oh, and exit, you're a system admin, eh? Right on, I've got... I'm just happy to have so many talented, passionate people in my audience. You guys rock. Okay, let's, let's do this. And by do this, I mean run from the Fire Witch, or maybe try out our new sword on the Fire Witch. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't bad. Yeah. We can make that work. Now the only downside to the Black Blade is I'm pretty sure it's the shortest katana in the game. So our, our reach is going to be garbage, which is kind of sort of fine here because uh, you don't want to be anywhere near Pontiff Sullivan. Or sorry, sorry, you don't want to be far from him. You want to be in incredibly close range most of the time. 
Exit says, I stopped when I figured out that I'm more of a social person and wanted to do more with my hands instead of sitting behind a desk or getting my eardrums fucked up in server parks. So now I'm a cable engineer for an ISP. Right on, man. That sounds great. Okay. We ready? Oh, boy. MC says, oh, nice. You even have the resource to strangle people, then. This is not gonna last long, probably, this first round. Look at this cathedral, though, eh? Gorgeous. Hello, Your Grace. So, good news. Most of his attacks are extremely clearly telegraphed because, again, He's not, like, a super experienced swordsman. He's just an old priest with two very powerful swords stowed away, like, up in the attic for some time. Problem is, he will devour your stamina. Kind of like the Abyss Watchers. Oh dear, yeah, that, that didn't last long. So there's a way to do this fight, I just... I have to get a feel for all of these again, it's... There is a way to largely stay behind him, but once you get there, you've got to get the... Oh, Exit says you can parry a lot of his shit, though. That's right, you could do that too. I'm just pretty bad at it. Um, we'll give that a try if a couple more attempts don't prove more fruitful, certainly. I mean, it was how we got the final boss of the, the first game. Uh, but what we, we kind of want to work on is getting behind him and rolling straight through um, that kind of large sweeping attack he'll use to, to uh, perform an about face and get us back in his line of fire again. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we are so screwed. Screw it. Try that again, Your Grace. Holiness. Whatever. So the thing is, he telegraphs his attacks very clearly. He just has very long combos with insane reach. Like, that, I think it's called the Profaned Greatsword that he's using in his, his right hand, has ridiculous reach. I'm, I'm trying in vain for parries, but I'm so bad at them. So bad at them. I'm trying to remember how I did this before. It's just not coming to me, though. As it says, you can only parry the attacks from the profane sword, not the uh, the dark sword. It's the the sword of judgment, right? There's one other thing I can do to help out here. In place of a... Uh, probably in place of the Karthus Milk Ring. We can, uh... Da -da 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 -da. Well, Jesus, Brady, try to remember what you came in here for. How am I just totally going blank? Um, oh no, it was my shield. I was going to swap out my shield uh, for the Grass Crest shield.
this is this is the fight that gave a whole lot of people hell when the game first came out. There's there's two battles that a lot of people point to as being like this. This is the hardest fight in the game, or the base game anyway. This is one of them. This is Candidate 1. We don't get to see Candidate 2 for a long while. What's up? Just anything to, to increase our stamina regen. no stamina to capitalize on it, damn it! And that... That's why people hate this fight. He's, uh... He's kind of designed like a Bloodborne boss, isn't he? Like, just never giving it a rest. Even, uh, even Gwen, that worked kind of similarly, had pauses in his attack pattern. Not big ones, but they were there. Well, we'll just keep throwing ourselves into the old meat grinder. Exit says, yeah, man, he has stamina for days. Does he even have stamina like a player character would? Because it, it seems like in this game... Well, actually, in all of the Souls games, uh, yes, humanoid enemies tend to uh, follow similar rules to you, but contrary to what a lot of uh, players believe, they do not follow the same rules. Now, standard enemies like the, the Irithelian Thralls and the, the Pontiff Knights definitely do. Exit says, oh, probably not. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think so. He actually gets a bit easier in the second phase, like so many bosses of this type do, if only because he's uh, a little more deliberate. so bad at this. And to be clear, the Lord of Cinder boss that follows him really isn't too bad. Uh, the, the Abyss Watchers... No, they, they won't give you the, the biggest fight of the Lords. There's... The last one puts up the biggest fight, if my memory is accurate. Uh, but the Abyss Watchers are far worse than anything that waits us around Irithel. Exit says only one ember left. Yeah, yeah, I know. And we've we've not been dying just a whole hell of a lot in this playthrough, I don't think. Uh, I just ember up every time I die, which probably isn't the best idea. Just, that one comes out so quickly. Me something big that I can follow through on.
Here comes the clone. Or in time, anyway. So now, he starts whipping out the actual magic attacks. I love the way the music uh, intensifies for the second phase. They tend to use the same move in sequence a lot of the time, right? Like the shadow kind of telegraphs the pontiff's moves. Thank you very much. Okay, take care, Seth. Thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you have a wonderful night. Uh, and thank you for your wonderful stream earlier today. That was that was great. I hope I get to catch more of the next one. Always appreciate you guys stopping by. Seriously, what with me being well in quarantine for half a year, I I can't tell you how much I appreciate your patronage and all of your friendship through all this. It means the world to me, truly. Thank you, Exit. I appreciate it, man. So it turns out, kids, the secret is not to lock on to him. People actually say that for a lot of the bigger bosses in uh, the Soulsborne series. Like, um, if they have these really crazy cleaves that like clear a wide arc in front of and to the sides of them, it's actually easier, apparently, not to lock on to them, because then you can attack them from angles other than just head-on. Like, a couple times you may notice I kind of glanced him with the very rightmost part of my R1's hitbox, uh, while he was more or less off to my side, and that enabled a lot of his attacks to just go over our heads. That was the secret. I can't believe it took me that long to remember. Now, uh... Exit, correct me if I'm wrong, man, but the next boss is one you definitely want to stay locked on for. I think the next one is... Yeah, we definitely need to do that. Whew. Well, there goes one of the two hardest fights in the base game. Exit says, wait, not really. I always thought the next one was easier if you did stay locked on. Well, at any rate, we've got to stop by the shrine real quick to level up. And this next area, don't you guys worry at all. We've got one more covenant to pick up. Two more covenants there. Uh, Exit says, are we talking about Aldrich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always had uh, an easier time with him in the second phase anyway by locking on, I want to say. Uh, no, sorry. In the first phase by locking on. In the second phase, it might be a little bit easier not to lock on. Um... And then the third Lord of Cinder, we definitely want to lock on for. Well, we made it. Um, let's level up real quick. Welcome, speak. Very then take. Okay, sorry, one second. I'm making sure I'm doing everything right for the Londor ending real quick. Okay. Exit says, damn, so I booted up my Dark Souls 3 game for PS4, and all my save games are not working. Oh no! That's, that's awful. Um... Oh, Exit says you were gonna give me some more embers? Thank you so much, man, but it's... I, I'm all right. I I can make this. I've not bought any of the embers from the shopkeepers yet, uh, and I know a couple ways to to find them pretty easily. But I really appreciate it. Um, but about your save games, have you uh, have you like uh, 
changed your PSN handle or anything like that recently? I mean, that probably isn't it, but I've heard that can mess with people's data. Might be time to start leveling intelligence. Exit says, oh wait, it looks like it's installing something in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's probably like either downloading the DLC again or updating... Well, God, I don't know what it would update, but something. Ah, greetings, our Lord and Liege. Good Exit tidings. says, I really hope I still have these. I even built a Havel monster in that game. Ready. Man, the Havel monsters are virtually unbeatable. My, uh... One of my best friends, uh, when we were younger, like I want to say, right around the time Dark Souls, or no, right around the time Bloodborne came out, uh, had built this absolute tank uh, for PvP in the forest and Dark Souls 1 using, uh, I think, Havel's armor, a couple rings that boost various types of defense, and then the uh, gold and silver tracers, which are just incredible weapons. Good time, the time is for the girl awaits thee, and so thou may... Right, so apparently Henri is ready for our wedding, and yeah, th this is what I meant when I said we're going to have to do one absolutely horrible thing to become the Lord of Hollows. It's... It's, uh, almost upon us. Ah, there you are. Exit says Havel set was unbeatable in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, it really was. I didn't see nearly as many people use it in Dark Souls 2, but it was really strong there as well. Let's, uh, drop off the Izalith tome. Ah, what have we here? A pyromancy tome from Izalith. Then you found the home of pyromancy. Brilliant. I will never curse being old and undead again. Now, now, show it here, quickly. Let us channel them together. The primal pyromancy is known only to old Master Salaman. Oh, MC, you're trying to evangelize for Cliff Empire? <laughs> right on. So now we've got a couple Izalith pyromancies, mainly the incredible Chaos Storm and Fire Orbs. Do not be gone. What is it? <laughs> okay. I think we're ready for... So we're kind of in for some interesting stuff, guys. So we just completed Irithyll, which is my favorite area in the base game. Far and away, there's one that comes really close. We won't get to it for a long time, though, and a lot of players miss it entirely. Um, and this is... Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to tackle my two least favorite areas in the entire game back-to-back. First, the worst area in a lore perspective, from a lore perspective, then probably the worst area from a design perspective. One that just feels, uh, not bad at all, but kind of rushed and unfinished. Exit says you're gonna be invaded a lot in the next bit, by the way. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, jeez. Um, hold on. Hold on. There's an app for that. MC says I'll evangelize Cliff Empire, hand of fate, and uplink till I die. Cause then I can't. Um... Well, yeah, always plug your own work, man. Hey, so, uh, look up there, guys. Do you see that absolutely beautiful little, like, uh, fortress structure up in the mountains? We've not been there yet. We're not gonna go there for a very long time, but keep its existence in the back of your mind. Because you are about to hear a 22-year-old teacher absolutely lose his mind over the lore in a six or a four-year-old game. Exit says, you say Hand of Fate, and I know that game, but it's also the title for the second Legend of Corandia game, uh, and that's actually really good. The card game, not that much. I'm not familiar with those games. Uh, tell me a little bit more. Are they like old-school RPGs or um, strategy games? Uh, MC. MC, does that look familiar to you? It shouldn't be here, but it is.
Exit says Legend of Karandia series were three adventure games written and produced by Westwood Studios. Oh, hell yeah! Man, Westwood was the best back in the day. MC says Bloodborne. I'm oh, afraid not. Um, I'm gonna wait and let the game fill us in. I guess it says they made it after Dune 2, if I remember correctly. Oh, I see. MC says, oh wait, I know. Dark Souls 2. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. It's... Man, you, you aren't gonna believe it when you see it. Oh, we've been invaded already. This is, um, an area home to... Yep. Yep, Exit's got it. That is, that is the Cathedral of Anne Orlando. What? MC says, no, it's not that. It was never that. <laughs> Exit says he's gonna parry you to death. Yeah, that, that's the most popular strategy here. Yeah, he's using uh, the target shield. Oh, and now they're just screwing with me. Oh, but for, for someone using a, a heavy weapon, they aren't doing an insane amount of damage. Oh, I'm so bad at PvP, though. Oh, that lag. Oh, that lag. Really now? You know I'm not going to do anything if you just do that over and over again. Short of that. <laughs> I think the lag might be the only thing keeping me alive. No, no. Aldrich Faithful. Oh, but we've got a blue Zentinel in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and the Phantom is booking it. <laughs> the Deacons of the Deep are here too, of course, protecting St. Aldrich. Oh, I know what he's doing. Yeah, some of these giants are still, still alive and will take you down. No, no, I know. Yeah, he's, he's baiting us into the, the drying guys. Oh, did my dude just use, like, um, an ember? Or, sorry, a uh, seed of the Tree of Giants? Oh, well, this is a... this is a nightmare. I just want to get to the giant tar man. <laughs> Let me pass. What? Why are you attacking me? I actually liked your game. Oh, hey. Good job. So the Aldrich Faithful are just like the, um... Oh, our, our helper's really good, though. But the Aldrich Faithful are just like the Watchdogs of Farron, save they operate in this area as an arena. So these giants are slightly, well, much smaller, actually, than the ones in the Cathedral. And I would argue not quite as dangerous but they will uh, get the drop on a lot of players as they, well, appear to be dead from the jump. Hey, thank you so much! Exit says, nice, he's dead. Yeah, that was, that was so good. Thank you, first build, I really appreciate the help. You guys are great. So we got uh, we got some shit and a gem. Nice. I'll take it. And we got the twin spears from the Drang Knight.
we uh, probably want to clear out the deacons before we do anything else here. Because they have excellent vantage on us. And notice all of these guys are wearing the dark blue robes worn by um, Archdeacon Royce's elite guard during the Deacons of the Deep boss fight. These are Aldrich's, I believe, personal retainers. Or those who converted to the Faith of the Deep after Aldrich corrupted them. I would argue these robes look much cooler, but I don't think you can ever give them. Or get them, right? Only the the standard, like, uh, sort of tan tunic. And, of course, the, the Archdeacon's robes. There's quite a lot of them here, too. Which makes sense, as their god is right up the stairs. And also just a giant pool of tar, so... I, uh, I remember quite a bit about my time as an altar boy, and I don't think it ever included any of this. I, I could be wrong, and I mean, my, my experience could have been unusual, but I don't, I don't think this was ever part of the, part of the liturgy. Launching homing fireballs and sacrificing people to a giant, like, living slime god. Large titanite. Nice. MC says you got the light version. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> this is uh, a shortcut back to Aldrich's, or uh, Sullivan's bonfire, and a quick way to some really nice loot up in the rafters. This church is so luxurious, it's got an elevator in the sanctuary. And it's got a mimic in the sanctuary. Oh, right, we're, we're out of juice. That's fine. There are actually ways to just knock Mimics out or return them to their, their neutral state short of running away, by the way. Um, I think if you hit them with an Undead Hunter's Charm or um, a Lloyd Charm in the, the earlier games, they will go inert once again, for some reason. And we got the... Well, it's a very special Golden Spear. Let me find it. The Golden Ritual Spear, yeah, it is uh, a Faith and Int-based weapon. A ritual spear presented to Dark Moon Knights before Sullivan claimed the title of Pontiff can also be used as a staff. Sorceries cast using this weapon channel the wielder's faith. I do like that this game has a ton of weapons that can also be used as, like, catalysts for uh, sorceries and miracles and things like that. That's quite nice. MC says, yep, and you can grind their drop with a Lloyd Beacon in Dark Souls 1. Really? Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. They're, uh, the, the symbol or the token of avarice, right? Which we actually got from the mimic that helped us defeat the fire demon. By the way, that is one of my favorite moments in the game, getting the mimic to team up with you temporarily to take down a fire demon, usually without taking a single hit. <laughs> oh wait, no, we don't, we don't want to rest up, not yet. We got giants to kill. And once we reach the top of kind of that little wall we're fighting our way along, we have to fight... No! No! I... Still alive, though. Still alive. Uh. MC says you get the symbol of avarice when killing the last mimic if you didn't get it before. I, had, I did not know that. That's really cool. So they make sure it drops. Um... Once we make it to the top of that wall, we have to fight our way through a very short, very familiar area, and we will, um, be at, uh, St. Aldrich's boss fight.
I'm dreading this so much. Oh, uh, those archers are back, by the way. They're nowhere near as nasty in this, this game. I think, uh, the roofs have been widened just a little bit, but they, they are here. I apologize for the neighbor's dog. First time it's, it's been terribly loud in ages. There's two of them, and I think they, they get upset when, oh no, it looks like there's a storm in the area. That's, that's what's upsetting them. Poor thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. We can actually run into, or at least get kind of a cameo from an old friend in this uh, area. Whew. An ember, nice, nice, we need it. Uh, so, uh, folks, overall thoughts on Irithyll as a stage, like... Any opinions on the design, encounters, anything like that? I think it was phenomenally well-balanced, diverse, had plenty of good loot, and the visuals are just stunning. Probably my favorite stage so far. And Pontiff Sullivan is legitimately a great boss fight. If you get those parries down, I'm sure the fight's way more, like, cinematic. Uh, and kind of epic than our our successful attempt was, but it's a great fight either way. Exit Dust says the Pontiff Knights are all assholes, though. They're not the ones I, like, always got, like, destroyed by. It was always uh, a combination of the Fire Witches and the Irithyll uh, Slaves. The, the, like, wraiths with the magic swords. Uh, the two of those together could just, oh man, shut you down. But yeah, the Pontiff Knights are exceedingly powerful, uh, specifically the versions without shields. MC says if this game did not have the aggravating fan service, it'd be the best in the series. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And since the the opinion on fan service is just that, it's like purely a matter of preference, I would argue from purely a design standpoint, like if we strip out the names and aesthetics of everything and it's just, here's how an area works, here's how an encounter works. It may be either the best in the series or tied for with Dark Souls 2 for me. Um, as it is, DS2 is still just a personal favorite, but this is this is really good nonetheless. We have another Titanite scale on just some guy. Nice. We're racking those up now. Speaking of, time to chop our way through a few very familiar Silver Knights and a very familiar encounter. But thankfully, with much more room. Or not! Never mind! Whew. So what you want to do there, of course, is, like, kite them in one at a time, or kite them around uh, walls out of the, the range of the others. And we might actually want to do this unembered, because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you maybe can't, uh, can't be invaded when you don't have an ember, right? If it works like Dark Souls 1? And just to, to make sure I don't get egg all over my face. Exit as... Oh, um... If we, uh... If we're not embered, we can't be invaded, right? Does it work like humanity in the first game? Because in Dark Souls 2, you could be invaded. Uh, whether you were hollow or human. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good to know. 
Thank you very much. I, I appreciate the clarification. We probably want to stay on Embered uh, until we're through with this area. Exit House not doing the secret room below the stairs? Not yet, not yet. I, I want to uh, get my souls back, one, and then open the uh, the secret. Mm, there go all our souls! Mm. I, I also want to open up the, uh, the shortcut and clear out all of those guys first. <sighs> okay. Okay. This is going to require some very precise rolling. So yeah, if you, you can't tell, this is a very deliberate throwback to the infamous Silver Knight Archer uh, rooftop sec segment of uh, Dark Souls 1. Uh, it's honestly, despite my performance so far, it's not as hard. It's really not. As it says, I'm gonna head out as well. Sleepy time, take care. Thank you very much, man. As I said, always appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Have a wonderful night. Uh, and hope you have a good day tomorrow. We should be on sometime... Probably late evening, early night, uh, your time tomorrow. Might have an early stream, I don't know. But take care. Oh my god. So Silver Knight Archers, yeah, those suck. Man, sounds like a storm's really whipping up outside. Oof. Something nice and strong. Sounds like things are just going wild outside. I mean, not absurd weather yet, but might get there. Uh, so if the stream abruptly goes down, just know that it's probably an issue with my internet. So sorry. I, it's doubtful, but just in case. So the goal here, the ideal, is just to throw them off the edge. You know, give them the good old Dark Souls 3 farewell. Now that we're up here, we can actually deal with them. Maybe not super well, but we can. They're a bit tougher than they were in the first game, more resilient too, I think. But my question to you, dear friends, is why are they here? Again, if you're going to take Dark Souls 2 as canon, which, I mean, the devs clearly don't want to, but we kind of have to, these guys should A, not be here at all, or B, certainly shouldn't be in pristine friggin' condition as they are. Ditto with the Black Knights. Well, you know the real reason they're here, and the reason that's all like this. Because they were in Dark Souls 1. Oh, we got the Easterner's Ashes, which gives us, uh, I think, Shiva's set and weapons from the first game? Umbral Ash of an armor merchant from an eastern land. The merchant, the captain of a clan of hunters, was fascinated with weaponry. Very good. That was close. Yo, uh, MC, you, you definitely recognize that, right? It's, it's the elevator. It's the weird elevator platform. Again. Ugh. 
No! No! Oh, there's one of them on a lower, a lower level. Oh, hell. Since he says I recognized it from the moment I saw it. Oh, this game! Why? We just came through the most brilliant area in the entire game so far. And we're hit with this dead away. Like, why? The little, the little, like, room in, uh, Irithyll suggesting, hey, maybe Anne Orlando once stood here. That's cool, that's, that's alright, but this? Come on! MC says I was teasing about the other games for some <laughs> freshness here. I gotcha. Oh, man. I'd love to get more of their armor, really. Their, their set's just as good here as it was in the first game. Maybe even a little better, I don't know. Oh, this is one of the spear variants, and they deal, uh, as you can see, a lot of damage. Whole lot of damage. They, uh, they've learned Ornstein's moves. That's one of his signatures. Shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. You know, I actually bet playing the first game after playing this one would be like a really cool experience, right? Like, you, you'd constantly be seeing, oh wait, now I understand that reference, now I r understand who that character was. It'd be like a really cool experience for a lot of people. Playing this after the first one, though, is, uh... Yuy. Okay, so right. Secret room. There is one. We definitely ain't doing anything with it, though. Not yet, anyway. MC says it would be an insult. Well, no, I honestly think, like... It'd be fun to see, okay, here's where they got that idea from. Oh, now I get the full context for all these things. Doing it in the proper order, though, it's just like, oh, it's that thing again. It's that same exact thing again, and there's all these cool little ideas all around, but... So many recycled ones. MC says just like playing Dark Souls 2 before this one. Yeah. I can, I can see that. So are we ready for this? Are we ready for lore-wise the worst area in the entire game? Well, we've got one more little goodie to pick up first. Dragon Slayer Great Bow and Great Arrows. Now we run down and use our shortcut to get back up. There is uh, an illusory wall somewhere around here, but we're not going to hunt it down yet, because trust me, we are not completing the encounter behind it today. That is a, that is a tomorrow kind of thing. We will be able to pick up one Covenant, though. I think you can get the, the base game's last two covenants right here in an area that for for pretense's sake I'm still not going to name until uh, seriously still uh, well normally there would be um, there would be the great statue here I think blocking the way but this is the tomb of the dark moon and uh, Oh man, this is this is going to be a downer way to, to approach the end of a stream. Remember, uh, we're supposed to be married to Anri as part of our, our ascension to Lord of Hollows. Well, time for the wedding. And remember, she is a good person who was never anything but kind and helpful to us. This is the one awful thing we have to do to make a better world for everyone. Welcome. Uh, 
gracious lord. Your spouse awaits you. You are very near. Please take the sword of a vow. May you be the truest lord of Londor yet. MC asks, is the spouse illusory? No. No, this is a... This is not great. Sword of a vowel. Ceremonial sword of Londor. Cannot be equipped as a weapon. It is said that a rite of wedlock will presage a true hollow lord. Your spouse's name is Omri, who patiently waits a rightful lord deep within the mausoleum. Your spouse. This is Gwendolyn's boss arena, though. Again. And here we can find the Lady of the Dark Moon's armor, because, you know, of course. Armor of a knight once known as the Dark Moon. It is said that this brass armor hides something hideous within. Something about its silhouette suggests femininity. We'll, we'll wear the whole thing because it's nice and light, and not too bad, honestly. That set looks really good in HD, I gotta say. Or in Super HD, anyway. So, the visuals here, of course, are magnificent. It's just like, really, again? And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, Londor killed her. They murdered her so she could fulfill her purpose. And we let them do it. You guys know me. You know I like to avoid any optional, like, fights or things like that that I feel would be... Like, in, in the context of a role-playing game, something I wouldn't want my character to do. This is the one exception. We ultimately do this to get the game's best ending, in my eyes, and, uh... Oh, this is gonna suck. I'm sorry. I have no idea why they insist on us doing this, either. Just like that, the pure, unbridled power of humanity is unleashed into us. The power of a deeper dark. A brighter, truer humanity. And with that, we've earned the last dark sigils we need to become... the Lord of Londor. Now all we have to do, let me double check, but I think we've done everything is, uh, yeah, talk to, talk to Yuria, and we're set. But here, to the side, we can find a ring that's very special. The Reversal Ring. This is gonna give us some important lore. Males can perform female actions, i.e. gestures, and vice versa. So, like, the male and female variants of gestures. A divine ring granted to the Dark Moon Gwendolyn in his youth causes males to perform female actions, and vice versa. Gwendolyn was raised like a daughter through the aura of the moon, and was said to behave like a sullen, brooding goddess. So, again, more evidence of Gwen's horrific abuse of his... his youngest. Well, the youngest present in Dark Souls 1, anyway. I told you I believe Gwen had two other children, and we get to encounter them in some form or another in this game. Sorry, three more. Three more. There's three more we didn't meet in any way, shape, or form. And now the Pilgrim has passed away, leaving us with the Chameleon Sorcery that she used, actually, to hide as a statue in the Church of Yorshka before murdering uh, Henri. God, yeah, that, uh... That hit me where I live. That felt awful. Well, let's pick up an ember and prepare to feel awful in a very different way.
notice uh, the uh, the silhouette cast against the moon leaves um, an aurora in the shape of the dark moon. That that's a nice little touch, I guess. It's like the bat signal for malignant sorcerer bosses. Um, it should be invisible path time, I think. But first things first, bonfire. Bonfire, bonfire, bonfire. Get ready for it, y'all. Uh, welcome back. Right, so let's break this down. Anne Orlando, the, the main cathedral anyway, seems to be perfectly intact, like in prime condition. Ages and ages later, none of the rest of the complex or the city is, just the cathedral. So first off, how the hell is that possible? Secondly, how is Irithyll constructed at the foot of it somehow, with none of the rest of it being altered? Thirdly, how does the rest of Lothric fit into this? And lastly, this is the biggest question. How is everything associated with Anne Orlando still pristine, ages and ages following Gwyn and Gwendolyn's deaths? Like, like, come on now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We've got a covenant to get to. We've got a covenant to get to. Then all we have to do really quickly is, like, storm the cathedral, and Aldrich will be in the same exact area where we fought Ornstein and Smoth. So we charge in there, cut him down, and claim his, uh, his ashes, I suppose. Yo, MC, any thoughts on, uh, any thoughts on either the, the revelation that, yes, this is the same exact Anne Orlando, because of course it is, or, um, this, this horrible, like, from soft red wedding we had to participate in? So there's an invisible pathway here. Sure. And it leads out to this tower. MC says, actually, yes. All right, hit us with it. So let's meet our Covenant Master. This is Yorshka. Does she remind you of anybody? The little tail, perhaps? It's believed by some that this is a child of Gwen's, or maybe Gwendolyn's by dark or a crossbreed Priscilla. MC says, it would make sense if you take in the lore of Dark Souls 2. This is not a sequel of Dark Souls 1. That's a big if, but yeah, I feel like this is an alternate timeline. Okay. Name thyself, stranger. I am Yorshka, captain of the Dark Moon Knights. What beckoned thee to such So a this place? adorable little, like, dragon hybrid has inherited the Order of the Dark Moon from Gwendolyn. And we'll Dolphins accept the covenant. Too. Very well. Captain to this knightless company I remain. I will grant thee... I love how she's out here too, because like, A, the, the gallery that her mom's painting would have been uh, stored in is totally destroyed. And B, Aldrich far. just kicked all the remnants Game of Anne Orlando <laughs> right on out. <laughs> if thou... Shalt swear by the covenant. MC says, this is an alternate timeline, a world created from a shattered fragment of reality, Guinevere, the consequence of the world of Dark Souls 2. Shall hunt the foes of our lords. So, like, Aldia's experiments and, and the leaders, children of Manus attempting to bring the, the abyss back the might have moon. fractured the timeline in Twain, and this actually takes place not only in an alternate timeline, but considerably before Art the events of Dark of Souls dark 2, but after in the timeline the of our perception. Of our Does that sound right? Swear this oath and face the Timeline and locations. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that could kind of make sense. And we get the Blade of the Dark Moon, which we're not going to equip, but there it is. A silver pendant depicting the Dark Moon and a sword. The Crest of the Dark Moon Knights, the original Blue Sentinels. 
Man! Do you think they put that clause in there just to, like, um, take a shot at Dark Souls 2? The Crest of the Dark Moon Knights, the original Blue Sentinels, equipped to pledge oneself to the Blade of the Dark Moon Covenant. When a member of the Way of Blue faces a Dark Spirit, the Blades of the Dark Moon by an ancient accord, blah, 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 blah. It's the same exact thing as the Blue Sentinels with different rewards. Yorshka's fantastic, though. I love this character. Oh. Good Blade of the Dark Moon. Welcome home. If I can provide thee succor, only tell me how. Long ago, our father Gwyn, lamenting the waning of the fire, became cinder of his own will. Now, the fire is linked by the champions who have come in his stead. Such is the will of father and the gods. And so the Dark Moon Knights took arms to watch over those who link the fire. But long ago, our company lost its last proper night. Only its covenant was preserved to this day, until the time of thy visit. Erdem taketh many forms, indeed. May I pose thee a question? Hey, check it out, a tower. This tower, this right on. stands tall and solitary. Man, you know that guy could mess up some other players. Its lower reaches long on moving. So, by what path didst thou here ascend? I just literally walked on air. I a I cannot begin to explain that air? to you. Or other winged thing. So, no, I can't fly. No, of course not. Forgive my prying. So the thing about Yorshka is, you could probably tell from her size alone, given that she's I'm meant to be one of the gods, say, she's very, come. very young I by the standard you. of, like, Gwen's people, and even, like, compared to Priscilla. She is a young girl, much like Gwendolyn was a very young boy, trying to, like, uh, carry the mantle of this massive religious and administrative institution that they just barely understand themselves because they want to be good kids. It's... It's... kind of heartbreaking that she's stuck out here. MC says, or you could say that Dark Souls 2 knowledge is being removed by the fragments of Manus, or each fragment is being pulled from one to another. Maybe... But, uh, I'll tell you this, there is a fragment of Manus in this game. And they're- they're not a boss, for the record. They are- they are a friend. Like, um... Like Ariana- uh, not Ariana, um... You know, the- the one from Alium Lois. Alsana. Hey, it's the painted guardian sword- painting guardian sword. That's pretty cool. I won't complain about that. I'll complain about almost everything else in this area, but I won't complain about that. And here's the Painted Guardian's armor. Right on. And this will, of course, drop us back down at the bottom of the Church of Yorshka. Fittingly enough. It's one of the simpler little, like, platforming drop puzzles in the, the game. And I think we've got everything, so time to Homeward Bone. So we are going to, like, just hoof it through, uh, Anne Orlando, quick as you can. Uh, then, once we've opened up a shortcut to Aldrich's boss room, we'll go back and level and do all of that good stuff. Take Aldrich on, and that might be it for today. Uh, tomorrow we can take on Yorm the Giant pretty quickly, I'd imagine. And then immediately after him, uh, we get thrown into another boss battle, the one I'm going to attempt to cheese my way through. And following that, uh, we embark on a very short quest to the fourth and final Lord of Sim Cinder. MC says, if you take Dark Souls 2's drawing transition, you can see the same here. Not quite as prominent, but yeah, yeah, between like Karthus and Irithyll, certainly.
All right, he's got backup though. Don't they always? Ooh. So I think the Batwing demons are totally gone, despite appearing to carry us to the undead settlement. They aren't back. It's just the Silver Knights and the Deacons here. Well, by and large, anyway. Silver Knights on the outside, mostly Deacons on the inside, I want to say. Man, I could use some more of your gear. Come on now, y'all. Let's get ready to meet an old friend or see one at least. Oh, a red eye Silver Knight? That's... That's not great. Look at how much damage he did through my shield. Oh my god. That's more like it. There we go, we got him. Good, good, good. That last swing came really close, but that should do it. And just some Titanite and a bunch of souls, okay. I will happily take it. You aren't gonna be attacked by anything, are we? No, he was it. Soul of a Crestfallen Knight. Well, hey, if nothing else, we've got a beautiful view of the game world, don't we? Yeah, you can't get in there. We have access to a very small area of Van Orlando, which is A-OK -okay by me. I did not want to have to run through this place again. More souls, good. Anyone down here? Time for joy. Okay. But is there any loot? That'd be a good reason for joy. So here's our cameo. Aw. Oh. It's... Man, I, I agree with that message. That's good. Yeah. Could this be a friend? You bet it is. It's our buddy the giant blacksmith from the first game, still clutching his ember. Oh, poor guy. He was one of the friendliest NPCs in the first game, and I guess he just gave out of old age. He was still working away. It is said that the giant blacksmith of Anorlando was once the blacksmith of the gods. Give to the blacksmith in the shrine to allow the use of gems for lightning, simple, and chaos infusion. And notice now, we've got, like, bits and pieces of Aldrich just, like, coating every surface in this place. And Orlando's not just gone dark, now it's coated in, like, uh, blighted tar. And St. Aldrich waits just beyond that, beyond that door. So first things first, before we fight the deacons or anything like that... Get us a shortcut open. Oh, but there's one of these here, of course, because, you know, why wouldn't there be? This is the other one. There's only two of them in the entire game. They're both Aldrich's pets. Which, you know, he must be so proud. Looks like something out of Bloodborne, doesn't it? We'll use our Divine Blessing to get rid of that curse buildup, or it doesn't do that, does it? Oh, jeez.
Let's uh, let's just hide a little bit. And he says in Bloodborne everything is dark. That's that's fair. Anything to purge a curse. No dice. Wait a minute. Why don't we, uh... Whip out some firebombs in the meantime. Yeah, you don't like fire, do you? Biggest threat present in An Orlando outside the boss. And he drops Aldrich's Ruby, the other cool Aldrich ring. Slayer says, Sir, there's no curse remedy. There isn't? That's a shame. By the way, welcome, Slayer. I don't know if this is your, your first time with us, but we are glad to have you. So, so glad to see you this evening. Could have sworn there was. Maybe. No, Dark Souls 2, you had items that would boost your curse resistance, but... Okay. Uh, thanks for letting me know that, by the way. Um, Aldrich's Ruby. Recovers HP from critical attacks. Oh, just like in Bloodborne, uh, with that uh, special rune. Aldrich, infamous for his appetite for flesh. Yeah, yeah, it's the same description. Okay. Recover HP or recover FP from crit attacks. Very good. We are now going to save and uh, go try to level once or twice, if we can. Uh, then we can take on, say, an Aldrich. Which is a pretty tricky fight, admittedly, almost entirely for its second phase. Its second phase is, uh... Whew, it really brings the heat. So how many levels can we get? Two, maybe? For, no, just the one. Okay, uh... Hmm. Still ought to go into intelligence. Gonna try to get that up to 20. Farewell, Ashen. And we'll drop off the... Easterner's Ashes. Which should allow us to purchase a certain weapon, right? Yeah, baby, the extra long washing pole. This is what we want. This right here is what we want. See, if you look at our katanas, they all have like a very decent, um, like, uh, bleed effect. A, a base 30, that's not great, but it'll do. What we want to do is go see old Andre. And I'm curious, can we infuse this with bleed? Not yet. Or maybe not at all. No, no, no. We need a special, special ember. Speaking of... My, my. The cold of that peaceable giant. Seems like ages past. I imagine his passing was long ago. I miss the old bugger right now. My thanks. I'll be sure this coal is put to good use. I'll be smithing weapons, never before seen by the likes of ye. It's but a small service to pay my humble respects. <laughs> so we're going to want to hold off on uh, upgrading the washing pole, because there's one more coal we can find, I think. And this coal will allow us to create bleed weapons. And it's those bleed weapons we really want, let me tell you. Oh wait, no, real quick, let's talk to uh, Uria to lock in the Lord of Hollows ending. Ah, our Lord and Liege. I presume my holy vows are sworn. Wonderful. Now thou art the true and deserving Lord of Hollows. With the spouse, 
the strength to claim the fire is thine. Thy lordship, I prithee rest the fire from its mantle. I love her armor. I. We can get it, but not until the very end of the game, I don't believe. Like. Embrace thy impending lordship. Oh lord, I prithee, when the moment cometh to link the fire, rest it from its mantle. The Age of Fire was founded by the old gods, sustained by the linking of the fire. But the gods are no more, and the all-powerful fire deserveth a new heir. Our Lord of Hollows, it shall be who weareth the true face of mankind. Our Lord, I pray thee... Yeah, so... She just outlined exactly what we're going to be doing in the ending we're going for. As I said, stealing the first flame. Because, as it happens, all of this nonsense that the world has endured for ages and ages has all been in the interest of perpetuating the, uh, the Age of Fire which serves the gods. Well, Gwyn's gods, the lords, who are almost all but extinct at this point. Meanwhile, it falls to other beings, humans, giants, uh, whatever the Erythelians are, fairies, I guess, technically, um, or changelings, what have you, to burn in the place of the gods for their benefit. And we're going to be able to create a new world, a better world, for all of these mortal species by just stealing the fire and putting an end to this torturous, self-sacrificial cycle. And as we'll see in the very end, Yuria and Londor also take their marching orders from an old friend of ours, who is absolutely dead set on getting it right this time. Oh boy, that's... That's a bad run. There we go. Oh my god! I was not expecting that. But yeah, even the standard Silver Knights can really mess you up if you get careless. Which is why this time we're not going to try to fight them at all, and we're going to run right past them into the Sanctuary and start cutting down the Deacons. Because there's a couple more pieces of loot in there we want to get our, our mitts on. Hey Slayer, thank you so much for the follow, I really appreciate it. If you'd care to join our Discord to stay up to date with, like, uh, our wonderful positive community of video game enthusiasts and, of course, my streaming schedule, uh, there should be a permanent link posted in uh, the bottom of the Twitch page's description. So, we would love to have you. So notice that the interior of Van Orlando has just been caked like ceiling to floor in this gunk. I would actually argue it looks very cool in this state as well, not as, as beautiful as it did in the first game, of course, but beautiful and oddly imposing all the same. Oh no, no. <laughs> Forgot to equip my Estus Flask, dang it. Pro level play here, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, they also know uh, the Force Miracle, I think. The big guys do anyway, the regular deacons don't. Proof of a Concord kept. Okay, that's something that can go either to Yorshka or to... Uh... Or no, it's just to Yorshka, I think. Because the Dark Moon, or uh, the Blue Sentinels don't have a commander in this game, do they? Could be wrong, but... Alright, I think we may have cleared out everything of import in Maine and Orlando. A bunch of these slimes here just cast off from Aldrich, I guess. 
Hey, so, uh, MC, give me your, your best bet, man. What kind of fight do you think uh, all of Rich's will be? Remember, he's like this giant, formless mass of, like, malignant soul energy. Who can we summon here? Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, a player, I think. MC says Manus? Nope, but you're, you're on the, the right track. Get ready. That is Gwendolyn slowly being eaten alive by Aldrich. So Aldrich, since it's Gwendolyn, is a powerful ranged caster. Like, really, man, I get that he's the devourer of gods, and it's cool to have him manifest some kind of humanoid entity you can target. That's that's fine, you don't just want to be fighting a bunch of slime. I I can get behind that. But really? Gwendolyn's been alive, albeit slowly being devoured this entire time. super great here as I'm kind of having to relearn the fight. We'll take the seed bra. Now he's going to pop an ember and become insanely dangerous. He'll use Gwendolyn's bow to summon down massive tracking hails of arrows, during which he will still attack us normally. massive trails of flame in his wake, like a giant fire slug or something. I mean, visually, it's a very cool fight, I can't deny that, but it's like, did we have to reuse even more Dark Souls 1 uh, lore for this fight? Even more? Oh, he, he loves pairing the Soul Spear with the Hail of Arrows, and rightly so, it does crazy damage. walking into everything, that's a shame, but his attacks can get really hard to dodge the longer this goes on. So you want to close that distance most of the time anyway, ASAP. Cinders of the Lord and the Soul of Saint Aldrich. 
Okay, so now that we're done, let's let's break that fight down really quick, shall we? Okay. Mechanically, it wasn't bad at all, right? He's got like a lot of uh, ranged attacks meant to kind of keep you mobile. Can't really turtle anywhere because he'll break down the columns much like uh, Smoft could. But the fact that they reuse Gwendolyn's music and Gwendolyn himself and several of his attacks and just modify them isn't fantastic. Like, I like the idea of Aldrich being this devourer of gods and, like, he uses Priscilla's scythe. He uses Gwendolyn's bow. But maybe give him, first off, a form totally his own. Or maybe he's possessing, wrapped around one of these statues of Lord Gwyn or something, and he can manifest different abilities based on all the gods or, like, a bunch of the major figures from across the two games prior. So use some of Lord Gwyn's stuff. Maybe use some of the miracles associated with Gwendolyn uh, or Guinevere for healing. Use uh, some of the stuff associated with the other two children we don't or haven't seen yet. Use... Um, uh, use something pertaining to the ancient dragon, maybe some of his fire attacks, or, uh, stuff from the, the Lord Soul Bearers in Dark Souls 2, anything like that, you know, like, give him a diverse moveset, but a totally unique form, and have these callbacks be to more than just one or two things recreated for this game. If that makes any sense at all. Like, it was, it was good, don't get me wrong, it was good, I love the arena, like, the... The audience chamber's just been ruined, and there's, like, this huge sea of Aldrich himself, like, just pooled on the ground, slowly writhing around. That's that's a great visual. But I wish it didn't lean, as so much of this game did, right back into Dark Souls 1 stuff. Not really iterating upon it, just saying, hey, here it is again. Uh, but we're, we're done here. We're done in An Orlando. It was a quick return trip. And after a visit to, um... Guinevere's audience chamber will be ready to take on the Third Lord. She's, of course, long gone at this point, but leaves behind her ring, the Sun Princess Ring, which I think boosts the strength of miracles. Oh no, gradually restores HP. That's pretty good. Ring associated with Guinevere, Princess of Sunlight, and eldest daughter of Gwyn, the First Lord. The ring is vaguely warm, like a beam of sunlight, and gradually restores HP. Guinevere left her home with a great many other deities, and became a wife and mother, raising several heavenly children. So at least she got, like, a, a happy ending out of all of this mess. And now we're ready to return to the shrine and place Aldrich's ashes on his throne. I tell you what, he put up way more of a fight than the next Lord is going to. check what we got. Let's check out that uh, cinder. I'm surprised that much of his skull was left, or it might be Gwendolyn's skull. Cinders of a lord left by Aldrich, devourer of gods. If the lords will not return to the, their thrones themselves, let them return as cinders. Aldrich became a lord by devouring men, but was disillusioned with his throne, and so took to devouring gods instead. And then his soul, his great deep soul, when Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. I like this idea of this obscure, kind of ominous, uh, ocean-based, kind of pelagic um, religion appearing in the waning days of this world, but I wish it was played with a little bit more than it ultimately was. Well, there's Aldrich's giant skull. And let's tur turn in some, uh, boss souls for weapons to conclude today's stream. Tomorrow we'll take down the third Lord of Cinder and might get pretty close to the fourth. The old Demon King gives us a pyromancy, of course. 
Traces of the tumultuous seedbed that birthed the beings known as demons. Hurls a chaos flame that scorches the vicinity, so one of the better chaoses moves. Demons born from fire bore its smoldering essence and perished soon after. Man shares this rapport with the flames to this day. We could also get his Great Hammer, of course, which oddly enough uses faith. Great Hammer, the old demon king. This weapon has survived since old Izalith and is imbued with remnants of the Chaos Flame. And from Pontiff Sullivan, we can get either of his swords. The Profane Great Sword, a ceremonial sword held in Pontiff Sullivan's right hand, representing the Profaned Flame. I guess like what remains of the Chaos Flame? Long ago, when Sullivan was yet a young sorcerer, he discovered the profaned capital and an unfading flame below a distant tundra of Irithil, and a burning ambition took root within him. This is a bit too heavy for us, though, so we're going for the Great Sword of Judgment, a ceremonial sword held in Pontiff Sullivan's left hand, representing the judgment of the moon, but with magic far closer to sorcery than any existing lunar power. Its dark blue hues, deeper than the darkest moon, reflect sorcerer Sullivan's true nature. We're going for that. We'll get the Demon King's ha Hammer, probably gonna get the Deep Soul, and then we can get the Life Hunt Scythe Miracle from Aldrich. Steals HP of foes using an Illusory Scythe. This is, again, Priscilla's weapon from the first game. Though it wasn't a miracle in that game, it was a physical, tangible piece of gear. Aldrich dreamt as he slowly devoured the God of the Dark Moon. In this dream, he perceived the form of a young, pale girl in hiding. Yorshka, I guess. And the Dark Moon Longbow. Gradually... Longbow of Dark Moon Gwendolyn, who was gradually devoured by Aldrich. This golden bow is imbued with powerful magic and is most impressive with moonlight arrows. We'll take that, just in case we need it. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today. Thank you all so much for joining me. So many of you stuck around or were present for both the early and late stream today. I'm so super grateful for all of you. Uh, all of you, whether you've been joining us in person uh, as part of our Twitch chat or after the fact, uh, catching this as a VOD on YouTube. I want to let you know how much I do appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow. There might be an early or late stream, or I might just go for like a really, really long afternoon stream. Probably the latter, because uh, I'm going to be a little tuckered out and have a little bit of work to do tomorrow. But uh, until then, thank you all so much, folks, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.